listeners, what I'd like to discuss with you is a method that has become very popular um, amongst Da'at, and that is what has become known as the Go Wrap approach. Now, I want to explain to you a little bit about the history of this approach, and just to mention, of course, that it is just one method of giving dawa. It's a useful tool, but of course, people are different, and there are lots of different ways that you can talk to people, but it does really help to have a systematic approach so that when you have a conversation with someone about Islam, you have a very clear idea of the sort of things that you need to cover. So the little history of this approach is based upon my many, many years of experience giving dawa in Hyde Park in a place called Speaker's Corner, where in London it's a place where you can stand up and you can talk to people about anything you like. So when I became Muslim, I used to go down there and I used to talk to people about Islam. Now, the approach that I had at that time was generally I would mention stories from the Qur'an, stories of the prophets. I would talk about maybe um, the paradise and the hellfire and the day of judgment. But a lot of the time, people would come and they would challenge me and they would ask me questions. So what I would do was I would try and answer their questions. And those questions could be about a whole range of different things. Maybe they would ask me about the position of women in Islam. Or, for example, why don't Muslims drink alcohol? Or why don't you eat pork? Or perhaps they would ask me about the Islamic punishments. So what I would do is I would try to answer these uncomfortable and difficult questions. Um, sometimes I had a had an idea what the answer might be. Sometimes I didn't, and I would often say, well, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to go away and research it, and I'll come back to you next week. But my basic methodology at that time was trying to answer these questions about Islam. Now, alhamdulillah, I think that over the years, I formulated some very good and very, very powerful arguments and actually, sometimes people would even become Muslim. That's how convinced they seem to be about the effects of these arguments. However, there were some brothers who were questioning about, should I really be going down there to Speaker's Corner? There were so many women who were not dressed properly and so much fitna and so many things going on there that is it really appropriate for a Muslim to be down in those places? Now, I would say to them that, well, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to go down to the Kaaba where there were 360 idols and people used to make tawaf naked. I, I'm not saying that they were doing that when the Prophet وسلم, was there, but that's what people used to do in those days. So that's generally what the atmosphere was like. So. Definitely Speaker's Corner wasn't as bad as that. Yet the Prophet wasallam still went to this people to invite people to Islam. Why? Because obviously that was a place where people would gather. That is a place where people went to listen, just like in Speaker's Corner. But it did get me really thinking about what I was doing there and how I was doing it. So I invited a scholar to come down and to see what I was doing. And for him to tell me what did he think I was doing, was it worthwhile, um, and was it something I should continue. Anyway, mashallah, this scholar came down and he spent the afternoon and he observed what I was doing. And alhamdulillah, at the end of the day, he said to me that, you know, what you're doing, Abdul Rahim, is very, very good. I, I recommend that you stay with it and you keep doing it as long as you are having success. However, your method of giving dawah is not really right. Now, I was very surprised when I heard that. And I said, well, what's wrong with my method of giving dawah? And he explained to me something that was very profound and very insightful. He said to me, look, here is the problem. 
people come and ask you questions about Islam and you give them answers and then someone else comes and asks you another question and you give them answers. He said, here's the problem. You keep on being asked these questions and you keep giving answers and eventually it all comes full circle and those very questions that people asked you in the beginning, they come back and ask you them again. So it's like you have almost this endless circle of questions. Well, how about hijab? How about polygamy? How about alcohol? How about Islamic punishments? And you try and give the answers and maybe they don't really satisfy and they come back and ask those questions again. He said, what is a much better method is to make them understand the basics, the fundamentals of Islam. He said, let me give you an example. If God is telling you to do something, for example, go to the highest building in your city and jump off that building or you will go to hell forever. You have a simple choice. Either you do what God says or you go to hell. He said, it's like that. You have to understand that the reason why we don't eat pork and the reason why we don't drink alcohol and the reason why we have these things in Islam, whatever they may be, is fundamentally because Allah, the creator of all things, the most wise, the all-knowing, has commanded us to do that. So the most important thing for a person to understand is about Allah, is to know that not only does Allah exist, but that Allah is one and He is unique, and that He has revealed guidance to us in the form of the Qur'an, and also that He has sent to us a messenger, the final messenger being Prophet Muhammad, May God's peace and blessings be upon him. So if you believe in Allah and you believe the Quran is from Allah and you believe that the Prophet Muhammad was the messenger that Allah sent for our guidance, then what choice does a person have after that except to submit and to surrender to the guidance of Allah and to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. So this was the advice that the scholar gave me. And it's from that advice that I developed what I came to call ultimately Go Rap. So G stands for God. How do we know that God exists? The O stands for oneness. So how do we know that God is one? The creator is one and unique. R stands for revelation. How do we know that God has revealed guidance to us and how do we know that the Qur'an is that revelation? The A stands for afterlife, the reality of life after death. This is important to make people understand how serious this matter is. And P stands for prophethood, i.e. how do we know that Muhammad May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is a messenger of Allah. So I began to use this method. I didn't call it go rap in the beginning, but I began to use this method in my dawah conversations. In fact, it became my default way of having a conversation with somebody about Islam. And after years and years and years of having these conversations, and finding what was the most effective way of discussing these matters with people, I came up with this system that now uh, has been known and is called uh, Go Rap. So that stands for God, the existence of God, the oneness of God, revelation, afterlife, and prophethood. So this is the essence of the system which I am going to explain in the next few videos. Oh.